That's funny. So, I mean, you, you, you take your bike, that bike to, uh, your trainings. So, um, I, I don't know too much about, uh, how you set it up, but I know you have a, bin- a bunch of locations and you, and you do a lot of training. And I actually know a few people that have taken your training. They're like, Oh my gosh, I learned so much about slow speed, especially younger women with giant bikes. Like mm-hmm. they're super scared of that, but then I see them do it and it's great. So do you take that bike? Is that your training bike? Or do you have like a specific bike that you want to show a little, uh, s- um, smaller people, I guess, or, well, I, I, I have three of them. I've got an ultra, uh, okay. I've got an electric glide police bike and a road King police bike. And, and we split it up and, and, uh, it doesn't matter which one we use, but that's mainly, we, we, we ride Harley Davis. People think I'm a Harley nut. I'm really not, but 90% of the people that come to me are riding Harley Davis's. So they like to see the exercises demonstrated on a Harley. So they know that yes, my bike will do that. And I specifically have my wife, I talk to the people and, and, and she does all the demonstrations, but she's five foot three and 120 pounds. And when they see it, I tell them if little girls can do it, you know, how hard could this be? Because they always have in their mind that it's the bike is so big and heavy that that, that means nothing. It's technique. Once you have technique, I, I tell people that, you know, the, the size and strength of the rider or the weight of the motorcycle has no bearing as long as you know the three techniques that we teach. And I based my entire course is set up like the motor officer course, except it's okay. 24 feet. Because that's what you have out on the road. Uh, you know, average street is uh, lane is 12 feet. So if you want to make a U-turn, you got 24 feet to do it. So I base everything on the 24 feet. And, of course, that also limits the, the amount of drops that you get. You know, if I put people in at 18 foot, yeah, they're going to be dropping their bike all over the place just like yeah. the cops are. And I don't want to do that. Plus, I found that using 24 feet, it's still a challenge for them. And in four or five hours, they get the hang of the techniques. If I've got 10 riders... Eight of them got the hang of it and can do all the exercises uh, in the end of four or five hours. And I'll always get a couple who, you know, really shouldn't be at the class. Maybe they're not ready for an advanced course. They should have taken, you know, like an MSF uh, experience rider course or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll have them come back and I'll even give them a, a private lesson. And that seems to work out well for them. So you, from your police background, um, I have my, I have a fire background, so I, I understand a, a little bit with the public safety and, uh, I take from what I know from my firefighter background. So a lot of the medical, uh, a lot of the mechanism of injury, a lot of the crash stuff. I, I, my goal is to protect the actual, like the human, um, when it comes to the police work and then how you, uh, do your, uh, training sessions and and everything what what is it like one of the biggest things that you pulled from your police background that you really try to impart on your students well it's it's, it's really just the techniques that's what i'm drilling okay. into their head and, and one of the hardest thing is to get people to turn their head because they want the, the brain you know the three techniques are the opposite of your instinct your instincts tell you all the wrong things on a motorcycle. Your instincts say, look at the thing you don't want to hit. Mm-hmm. And, and I tell them that, you know, you've got to turn your head. And, and once you do, and once they get that in their head, that the bike, it, your hands will follow your eyes. It's it's amazing to see the turnaround, which usually happens in, in about uh, two hours. But uh, that's, that's what I teach them. And I also tell them about the 12 second rule, which is when you're out on the street, look 12 seconds ahead. And on the street, the head and eyes technique is the most important. You're not going to be using the friction zone and the rear brake, but you're going to be using your head and eyes. And to get that through their head, to look for the escape path, to look through the end of the turn, position yourself where you have the best view around the turn. And those type of things I stress. And, of course, braking using both front and rear brakes because so many people are driving a car. They want to use that rear brake. Thank God for ABS because that's that stopped a lot of accidents. Because people used to just jam on that rear brake yep. and slide onto the ground. Yeah, so the, the whole translation from a car to a bike, you, you, you tend to see that a lot in, in your trainings where they'll just slam that brake because they're used to their foot. So that you see that a lot on yours? Uh, I've seen it a lot, and, and it's getting less and less now as, as uh, more bikes are coming with ABS. Because it's difficult, you know, you, you get when with ABS, if you really slam on that rear brake, you'll get a little chirp, but it just mm. lasts for a split second. And I still occasionally see that, but I know that, you know, uh, I test them with their with their front and rear brakes so that they realize that as long as the bike is straight up, you could just, you can slam down on those brakes as hard as you want, and the bike is going to stay straight up. You can't do it with the bike leaning, though now they even have the uh, cornering ABS, oh, yeah. which, which I have on my own bike, but I, I actually haven't tested it yet. I can't get it through <laughs> my head that, that I can be leaning over, you yeah. know, scraping the boards and slam those brakes on and, and it's not going to low slide. I got, I got to keep working on that and, and actually test that. But 
that's what they say. Yeah, I, I definitely would only want to use that in emergencies. I, I, I don't want to activate cornering ABS or anything like that yeah. if I can help it. Um, the whole setup before the turn, you know, going through the turn, uh, you know, smoothly is very important. I, I like the fact that you focus on the head and eyes and then the 12-second rule. And then you're pointing out within that 12-second rule all the little things that you need to see and focus on and not focus on. You don't want to focus on, you know, the cool things on the side of the road while you're driving. You want to f- grab that, let go, grab that, let go. Um do you really, really, really emphasize that? Because I was watching your ride along type stuff where you're talking about what to look for. Do you mm-hmm. emphasize that a lot when it comes to actual street riding? Yes. And in fact, I, I, I teach them that in the course by I have a series of cones. They're all orange, except for the, the cones that they're supposed to look at, which have a green tip on them. And, and I, I get it through their head that your brain is going to tell you to, way too late to look for that point where you want to make the turn. So mm-hmm. I tell them, you need to look for that green cone. When I say green cone, at that very second, and they're still really far from that cone and they can't get that through their head. But after three or four tries, they realize because if they wait till their brain tells them to look for that point, it's too late and they'll ride right out of the exercise. But once I get that through their head to, to look for that place that you want to put that front tire, and the sooner you look for it, the better. And we yeah. even show them on some of my videos. In fact, my my ride like a pro video, I show them in slow motion when they're supposed to look at that point. And it's way before you ever get there because if you're, whatever's happening in front, 10 feet in front of your bike, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, there's nothing. You, I, I like to talk about like the, uh, like a ratcheting strap. You know, you're looking at your exit coming back or looking at your exit coming back, kind of like a ratchet strap. Um, I like that green cone thing. I, I, that's, that's something I never even thought about having somebody actually look at it when you say look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I use a PA system, so uh, most of the time, <laughs> so they could hear me, you know, because a lot of them come to the class with uh, with some pretty loud pipes. So I've got a thousand watt speaker. So when I say green cone or turn your head, uh, you know, they know to do it. I, I some people are very stubborn about that. In fact, my wife was, and I had to get one of those electric collars I put on her. You know, I, I trained my dog with, <laughs> and when she didn't turn her head, no, I didn't do that. I, I thought about it. I didn't do it. <laughs> Oh man, that would get me in trouble. <laughs> teaching, teaching my wife this stuff was like a day at the beach. Oh, it was oh, just wonderful. Was I did beautiful. have bite marks on the barrel of my gun. Because, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But once oh, she got awesome. it, she got it. 